Hi everyone, welcome back. Thanks so much for everyone that has been following this journey of mine. Uh, trying to get a YouTube channel started has been extremely interesting, very complicated. I'm just gonna say, when it comes to using cameras, I have no clue as to what I'm doing. So not only am I learning how to use my Canon, but I'm also learning how to use my new Mac and trying to edit at the same time, which I have absolutely no skills. <sighs> Bear with me as I fumble my way through but I really appreciate everybody taking the time to send me a comment uh, to subscribe to my channel and so as promised today we're gonna talk a little bit about art supply so stay tuned acrylic. okay so acrylic paint acrylic paint I'm gonna stop clapping stop clapping uh, okay acrylic paint is what I love using and I use a whole bunch of different types I do have a preference in the grade of acrylic that I'm using I made the mistake of going out and buying myself treating myself years ago to a bottle of golden paint after I saw the vibrancy of the colors that they have it was really hard to go back no offense to all the other paints on the market I do like Liquitex I'm starting to enjoy that I like that I can get these really large bottles I like um, um, the tops of these bottles also except they do I'm really bad for not cleaning the tip but it's a snap snap bottle like this these are soft body soft body Liquitex and then I have golden which is fluid this is again golden acrylic and this is heavy body this was my first time trying the heavy body I also like high flow from golden paint so this is the thinnest which is the high flow so it's very liquidy uh, this is the second it's just called fluid uh, it's got a, a thicker consistency but you can still pour it out and then in terms of the thickest the heavy body uh, golden and this is it's almost like paste is mixed right into this one how the liquid tech the soft body I would say it's in between it would go this way so not quite as thick as the heavy body not quite not quite as thin as the fluid every now and again I like to just throw a little bit of something else in there is I like the liquid ink it gives a really nice transparent sheen, um, alters some colors, and it's really, really liquidy. I sometimes just like to glaze over some things. The reason I have so many different kinds of acrylic paint is I don't like my paints to all look the same. This is the best way that I know how to give my, my work some uniqueness. I guess like in terms of how the paint looks onto the canvas you know applying some thick is really good applying some thin uh, it gives it really good contrast and so you're adding texture to the painting without doing anything except for changing the type of paint the other thing I talk about every now and again that I always forget the name of is high flow medium from golden how I use this is sometimes I need my paint to be even more runny than what this can do but I don't have this color like this yellow in high flow what I do is is I use this to water down paint and make it now a high flow acrylic paint and the reason I use this opposed to water is because of the binder that's in the acrylic paint you don't want to water down your acrylic paint too much the binders need to be able to connect to each other and if you saturate everything with water and you disrupt the chemical balance it no longer holds together and so it's not archival anymore this is your trick it's a little bit more expensive obviously than using water but use this to water down your paints opposed to water and I have to learn to smile more when I'm talking because um, I get serious. I don't know why I get so serious. I think it's because this is nerve-wracking. Uh, okay, so this is the other one that you absolutely can't read. Matte, golden, medium. It doesn't have to be golden. You could use any type that you want. So you can use the golden medium to collage. It says here it's translucent. It low gloss so if you have really shiny paint you can mix a little bit in there so that it takes away that sheen and it also gives a little bit of an extender so it opens the length of time it takes for your paint to dry so if you want to work a little bit more like in an oil painting style then you can add some matte medium to your work or gloss medium if you like your work to be really shiny you can add it at gloss everybody needs a paintbrush um, nothing fancy cheapest brushes I can find and I mean cheap Canadian tire 
I did buy a whole bunch of really high-end brushes from Liquitex. No offense, Liquitex. I haven't figured out how to use them yet. It's not that I don't love these. It just, I haven't incorporated them into my work yet. So stay tuned. At some point, I will figure out what to do with this brush and make marks that are unique to me. The reason why I buy the cheap brushes, there's no difference. I don't think there's any difference. These hard brushes, I've used this brush so many times that the bristles have turned and they permanently stay that way. When I first bought these brushes, I despised them. They were horrible, I couldn't paint anything. Do you see the difference of how, like I can't, very, very stiff, hard bristles, really, really soft bristles. And so I needed to practice and learn how to make marks, my marks, using this type of brush. But what happens when I do that is those marks evolve and they change. They are still consistent of things that I do, but they've evolved. And that's the lovely part about the more you do, the better you get. So the marks that I make with this are still gonna be mine, but they're gonna be unique and they're gonna be much different than the marks that this brush made. And when this brush dies, the new brush that I'm gonna buy is not gonna have this tip that has been molded over time the way this has. You want to save your funds for the higher end paints. I like to make marks, as you guys know, I'm a mark maker. Um, I have tried so many different things throughout the years. Okay, the other thing, I'll use um, soft pastels. I also have the Derwent pencils. I have a bunch of these that I like to use. But these are also water soluble. One thing you have to remember to do when you're using anything water soluble, you have to spray it first. That way you're not applying the brush across it and blurring everything. So this is the one that I use, it's by Grumbacher and it's a matte film so it doesn't build up any layers onto the canvas. So a light little spray, let that dry overnight. And then the next day, you can apply your liquid varnish with a paintbrush. You still have to be delicate with it. You don't want to uh, rub it too much um, because this one here is removable. So if you use it too abruptly, it will, again, blur your marks. This is the painting trays that I was talking about. I have a bunch of them. I have a couple in gray and I also have a couple in white. And so this is just like once the paint is dry on here, I just go and I, and I peel it off and then it's ready to paint again. So I have a bunch of these trays, squeegees. These are actually like baking bowl scrapers. They're called uh, mesomizers. I think that's the proper term for it. Um, I love these for moving around paint onto the canvas, using thin layers of washes. This is a bathroom shower wall scraper that I got from the dollar store. It covers a larger surface and it's really cheap. I did a video on YouTube that shows how I apply uh, gesso using that as well. Okay, so what can I say? I have too many art supplies. I just want you to all know that this is not exactly everything that I use on a canvas, only because it's unnecessary to use this many art supplies. And I I wanna to say to all of you out there who are just starting, do not go out and buy $1,000 worth of art supplies. Art supplies are extremely expensive. What you need to do is first practice with what you have. That I can't stress that enough. If you have crayons, use crayons. If you have pens, use pens. I did my art exam in university, my last, my final, with a pen because why? Why not? I had been drawing for so many years using a pen, a ballpoint pen, that I kind of had mastered being able to sketch with a pen. You can make art with anything that you have in your house. And I was also on a mission to find a way to make the line that I wanted to make. Uh, line work is really important in my art if you haven't already noticed that. There's a theme that runs through every piece of my work and that's my line work. Um, and I know so many of you have asked if I could finish a painting right to the very end so that you can see how I apply my mark making. But I want you to all understand that the mark making that I make is unique to me and that's kind of like my signature. So I don't want you guys to develop a way to make a mark that looks like mine. I want you guys to develop a line or a mark that is yours and unique to you. That's what makes you an artist. That's what's gonna have people gravitate towards your work. It'll be your signature mark. When we sign our name, 
that signature is ours. Like think in terms of somebody trying to forge your signature. You'll always kind of know that it wasn't you that made that mark or that signature. That's how your art should be. You should be able to look at your art or someone else's art and recognize them as an artist or recognize them as that's their work. Another way to explain that is think in terms of musicians. When a, when a Beatles song comes on the radio, you don't need the announcer to tell you that it's a Beatles song. You should know instantly that that's the Beatles because their sound is so unique. Your art should have the same effect. It should be you and not me. I hope that makes sense. If your intention is to grow your art career and become a professional artist, that's what you need to be practicing is your own marks. I'm giving you an insight into the tools I use, but now your, your job is to go and take those tools and play with them over and over and over and learn everything about them. And it's when you learn everything about the tools that you're using is you'll be able to make those marks that are going to be unique to you. So I hope that answers your question about what I meant by learning your signature style and what that means in terms of the art world. Okay, so other tools that I want you guys to know that I use. Um, these are some other things that I have used. These are some of my mark making tools. The last thing that I use to make my mark, I use these large Molotov markers. This one's an empty one. Is it empty? It's not empty. It's white. How funny is that? This was an empty marker, but I have obviously filled it with a high flow liquid golden paint. Yes, I don't really, sorry Molotov, but I don't really care for the quality of the paint that is inside these markers. And so I, when I buy them, I'll use what's in it. And then once it's empty, I have figured kind of a way of how to open it. And then I fill it with my own high flow golden paint. Just don't use the paint inside the markers fill it with high flow golden paint. Um, and so they come in different sizes. So here's just a thin one. And these nibs are extremely expensive, but you can get them replaced. I don't know if you could see that, uh, but this is a Sharpie peel off China marker. I love China markers. I think they're kind of fun to use. And I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now, don't buy any other kind of China markers that aren't made by Sharpie. Sharpie has the best quality ones. Last really, the last thing I really use is just pencils. Nothing, they're just drawing pencils. They're not special pencils. Um, this is actually a pencil crayon and by Goldfaber. I haven't really figured out how to use this yet. It's too, it's too delicate for the work that I'm doing, but perhaps if I used a much, a much lighter weight canvas, I would be able to use, I just think the colors are so pretty. Um, so eventually, I, I will figure out what to do with this or use it in some sort of, uh, in some of my work. And so these are just drawing pencils. I like the like four Bs and up, four, five B, six B, seven B, eight B. The other thing that I'm just starting to play around with is pouring medium. Not in terms of like pouring art, but I'm playing around with changing the consistency of some of the fluid high flow paints from Golden, just to get even a, a different kind of texture in paint. I love differences and I love contrast of thin and thick and light and heavy. So I just started playing around with that. I haven't really come to a way of using it yet, but it, this is what I mean about practice. So when I first bought all of these art supplies, I had no clue what to do with any of this stuff. It was trial and error. It was hours and hours and hours of me playing around and not caring what I was doing. It was really just about making art. One more thing. Um, I don't like waiting for my paints to dry. So having a hair dryer handy, one that maybe isn't one that you're using on your hair, is great to have in the studio to help dry some of your work. You don't wanna dry your really thick medium because that if you force that to dry too quick, it could have cracks in it. Unless you like the cracks, I mean, that can all be a part of your process and it can add a an, an texture to your work. So these are my supplies. It's crazy how much stuff I have. And there are days where I honestly just take out my paints and and a china marker and that's really it. It's about using what you have and learning how to use it to the best of your ability that is gonna make your work shine. So I'm gonna leave you with this and say practice, practice, practice. And that's the best way that you're gonna make art that resonates with yourself and with other people. So stay tuned and we'll see you all soon.